Hi, I'm George. Welcome to MedEV. Today, I want to discuss something that is heavily affecting the EV industry, the chip war between China and America. The recent US chip blockade against China contains some of the broadest export controls yet, forming Chip4 Alliance to cut the world's second largest economy off from high-tech semiconductors. In China, the supply rate of the domestic automotive chips is less than 10%, the lowest is even less than 1%. Even if the processing chip has not been restricted by the US, most automotive-grade chips were all imported from Europe and America. But now the US has took off its mask and is ramping up efforts to block every path. Let's discuss how can China's chip industry break through this siege. Gold and oil were both America's tools for its hegemony. Cheap is obviously the next one. The US did not only curb the China's production of chips, but also the entire ICT industry chain, including storage, server, operation system, database, and software. Which means, even if China was to obtain TSMC tomorrow, it still couldn't break the technology bottleneck when the US can easily control the chip designing software and data storing server. First, let's look at what the US had done to help China's technology progression. In November 2021, it stopped exporting EUV lithography to China. In July 2022, it pressured the Netherlands ASML and Japan's Nikon to stop selling DUV lithography to China. In August, the US Department of Commerce banned the export of EDA software to China, restricting the chip design. Diamond and gallium oxide were also added to the control list. In October, Biden administration required chip makers to obtain permission from the US to export advanced chips and chip manufacturing equipment to China. In addition, the Chips and Science Act was aimed to catalyze investment in domestic semiconductor manufacturing capacity using $52.7 billion for manufacturing, R&D, and workforce development, with another $24 billion US dollar worth of tax credits for chip producing. These funds also come with strong guardrails, ensuring that recipients do not build certain facilities in China and other countries of concern. In fact, this severely hurt countries around the world, for example, South Korea, which has 60% of the chips that was exported to China. The 2022 Q4 profit of the two electronic giants, Samsung and LG, were not looking good. Samsung plunged 69% and LG shrank by 91.2% which is a new low since 2018. The company's single quarter profit fell below 5 trillion won for the first time in nearly 8 years. But as US millions, there's nothing they can do about it. Back to cars, automotive chips can be broadly divided into four types by their functions. Control chips, mostly MCU and SOC. Power chips, mainly IGBT and MOSFET. Sensor chips for monitoring vehicle data and obtaining environmental data. And memory chips, RAM and flash, which are similar to that of computer and smartphone. China's own chips are mainly MCU, power chips, storage chips, and other mature chips, but fewer SOC, which required advanced processes. Even though there are many companies claim that they can mass produce 7 nanometer chips, most of them just purchase designs from foreign companies and make some adaptations. As long as the US is in control of the tools and software, there's no way to get around. Moreover, China also lacks a complete automotive chip standard, especially specific standards and matching test standards. A generally accepted standards for domestic chips are also limited and backward. Overall, the demand for automotive chips accounts for only 10% of the chip market and because of the long design process, large investment for safety and reliability requirement, the revenue and the profits are relatively low. Plus, there's already an oligopoly in the market. The later entrants are facing a tough time. As a result, 
There's only one Chinese company in the top 20 global automotive chip makers. China's output value only accounts for less than 5% of the world. It sounds miserable, right? But as a growing market, there could be a huge surge of capital and technology related to the chip producing, making the industry develop rapidly. Or could it? In 2022, a total of 5,746 chip-related companies in China were cancelled, a 68% increase compared to 2021, with an average of 15 chip companies shut down every day. Meanwhile, the global chip industry are also quite bleak. Apart from Samsung and LG's performance plummeted, Intel is also seeing a huge drop in sales with 32% revenue dropped in 2022Q4, which is the lowest since 2016, losing $700 million. Of the 159 listed chip companies, 104 disclosed their financial report, 49 of which have declining net profit. Now the chip production is back on track, the terminal demand is relatively low, and the dollar is inflated. The entire industry is under heavy influence. The US sanctions are affecting the confidence of the chip makers. Therefore, looking at the entire chip industry, including China, the gold rush has passed and is returning to a benign development. This is when the chip companies and car companies in China should realize that they share common interests. It's hard for Chinese chip companies that had a late start to have enough time to verify the iteration of the automotive-grade products. Chinese car companies tend to purchase foreign well-developed car-grade chips for higher vehicle quality and a more stable supply chain in the past. However, now under such stress, car companies and chip companies need to work hand-in-hand -hand for mutual beneficial system, not only to ensure supply and reduce costs, but also to promote independent progress. In any case, what's the harm in it? Therefore, when the United States wants to cut China off from the entire chip industry, China is looking at a protracted war. It needs to break through technology barriers, create a system for automotive chip standards, and have a big enough domestic market for products. China's auto sales already secure the top spot in the world, and the worldwide market for Chinese EV is growing every day. Yet, all this is but a flash in the pan. If Chinese cars are still highly dependent on the US for chip-related stuff, China has been successful in application software for the past decade or two. But now is the time to take another step forward into the fundamental areas like chips, operating system, tools, software, database, and other essential technology to counter the blockade. What do you think about this? Who can win this chip war? The United States or China? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share it with your friends.